The story you are about to hear represents a missing piece in the puzzle of modern history. Without this knowledge, many contemporary events are simply beyond understanding. You are about to hear a man tell you that the major tax-exempt foundations of this land, since at least 1945, have been operating to promote a hidden agenda. And that agenda has nothing to do with the surface appearance of charity, good works, or philanthropy. This man will tell you that the real objectives include the creation of a worldwide collective estate, including the Soviet Union, which is to be ruled from behind the scenes by those same interests which now control the tax-exempt foundations. The man who tells this story is none other than Mr. Norman Dodd, who in 1954 was the staff director of the Congressional Special Committee to Investigate Tax-Exempt Foundations, sometimes referred to as the Reese Committee, in recognition of its chairman, Congressman Carol Reese. The interview you are about to see was conducted by me in 1982. I had no immediate use for the material at that time, but I realized that Mr. Dodd's story was of extreme importance, and since he was advanced in age and not in good health, I simply wanted to capture his recollections on videotape while he was still with us. It was a wise decision because Mr. Dodd did pass away just a short time afterward. In recent months, there has been a resurgence of interest in the substance of Mr. Dodd's story, and we have decided to make it available to the general public. And so what now follows is the full, unedited interview, broken occasionally only for a tape change or to omit the sound of a passing airplane. It stands on its own as an important piece in the puzzle of modern history. Mr. Dodd, let's begin this interview by a brief statement for the record, telling us uh, who you are, what your background is, and your qualifications to speak on this subject. Well, <clears throat> Mr. Griffin, um, as for who I am, I am just, as the name implies, an individual born in New Jersey and uh, educated in private schools, eventually in a school called Andover, Massachusetts, and then Yale University, and running through my whole period of being brought up and growing up, I have been an indefatigable reader, and I have had one major interest, and that was this country, as I was led to believe it was originally founded. And um, I entered the world of business knowing absolutely nothing about the, how that world operated and uh, realized that the only way to find out what that world was consisted of would be to become part of it. And I then acquired some experience in the manufacturing world and then in the world of international communication and finally chose banking as the, air, the field I wished to devote my life to. And I was fortunate enough to secure a position in one of the important banks in New York and lived there. I lived through the uh, ex conditions which led up to what is known as the crash of 1929. And uh, I witnessed what is tantamount to a collapse of the structure of the United States as a whole. And much to my surprise, I was um, confronted by my superiors with a, in the middle of the panic in which they were immersed, I was confronted with the question, Norm, what do we do now? I was 30 at the time, and I had no more right to have an answer to that question than the man in the moon. I, however, I did manage to say to my superiors, gentlemen, you take this experience as proof of something that you do not know about banking. And 
you better go find out what that something is and act accordingly. Four days later, I was confronted by the same superiors with a statement to the effect that, Norm, you go find out. And I really was fool enough to accept that assignment because uh, it meant that you were going out to search for something and nobody could tell you what you were looking for. But I was, I felt so strongly on the subject that I consented to. I was relieved of all normal duties inside the bank. And uh, two and a half years later, I felt that it was possible to report back to those who had given me this assignment. And so I rendered such a report. And as a result of the report I rendered, I was told the following, Norm, what you're saying is we should return to sound banking. And I said, yes, in essence, that's exactly what it, I'm saying. Whereupon I got my first shock, which was a statement from them to this effect. We will never see sound banking in the United States again. And they cited chapter and verse to support that statement. And what they cited was as follows. Since the end of World War I, we have been responsible for the, what they call the institutionalizing of conflicting interests. And they are so prevalent inside this country that they can never be resolved. This came to me as an extraordinary shock because the men who made the statement were men who were deemed as the most prominent bankers in the country. The bank of which I was a part was spoken of as a Morgan bank. And coming from men of that caliber, uh, 